Okay, so we're back and we've got more toys. Yep. So we've got the rather wonderful Novation Peak yep. here, and this is hooked in directly on MIDI to Launchpad Pro Mark III. Yeah, so basically we've got, as we said earlier, we've got uh, MIDI Out 1, we've got MIDI Out 2, and we've got MIDI Through as well. So essentially we're just connected with the included 3.5 uh, jack to five pin in MIDI connector out into peak. So that's um, connected now to our sequencer, which in the sequencer settings, if we hold shift and sequence, we can set the MIDI channel that we want that sequence to send out on. So that's just sending out on MIDI channel one directly into peak. Yeah. So we can now play peak. But it's also worth noting that, as we said earlier, if you hold shift and go into sequencer, you can change that view. So uh, earlier it was in the drums view when we were sequencing from Ableton. But now, of course, we're playing a, a, a synth, an, an instrument we can pitch. I can set that into the scale so we can see that we've got a scale keyboard. Go back out. This is now locked into scale. Um, so one of the really good things I've been having a lot of fun with yeah. is probability and mutation in the sequencer. So at the moment, we've got like a, a keys kind of sound, a nice sort of plucky kind of key sound. And we're in scale, so we know that there's no you know duff notes that we can hit. And one really good fun thing I've been doing is just basically placing some of these notes randomly into the sequencer. So I'm just gonna populate this 32 step sequence with random notes. Okay, hopefully that should do it. Okay, so basically if we now play the sequence, Got a collection of really random notes. <laughs> so, Although it's quite underworldy. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, very underworldy. Yeah. Well, let's, let's see if we can maybe make it more underworldy. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, basically, what we could do, there's tons of different settings. So, if we go into um, pattern settings, um, we can actually uh, change the way that this pattern behaves. So, at the moment, it's going forwards in the sequence, but we can change that into reverse so it can go backwards. But we can also change it ping pong, so it'll go forwards, and then when it reaches the end of the 32 steps, it'll go backwards. But also we can set to random, which I've been having a lot of fun with. So okay. this is basically gonna pick out random steps in this sequence. Sounds a lot of fun. Um, so probability and mutation, adding some kind of random kind of behavior even more into the sequence. I can actually pick steps here, and we've got a value that we can change. Now, probability is the probability or the chance of that note being hit in the sequence. So if we change a couple of these values, so these are now less likely to be triggered in this sequence. So we're just gonna set some random values here. Okay, so we'll play that again. And you can see it's randomly picking notes now at yeah. the moment in the sequence, a lot of fun. So if we, now add some mutation into this. So what mutation is gonna do, we can pick per step the mutation value, okay, from zero to maximum. Again, look in the manual, we can see the uh, degrees of severity right. when it comes in. But essentially what we're gonna do is it's going to adjust the pitch. So we've got the probability selecting if that note's gonna hit. And then mutation is then gonna add a random uh, note pitch into the sequence on that particular note and step. Okay. So we're gonna add some of these in and see what we get. Hopefully, what you'll be able to hear is, yeah, random selected notes and then random pitches being applied to those notes. So essentially what we're doing is we're, we're sequencing external hardware, but we're just, we've got a completely alive sequence that is uh, organic and just creating its own. <laughs> I, I suppose it's one of those things where if you have got a, a time where you're stuck for an idea of something, yeah. then programming some stuff in, finding a sound that you really mm -hmm. like, mm. and then just letting it go, sticking record on. Yeah. And then if you've got that magical, you know, half a second block or whatever, yeah. then you use that and you, you have a, the basis of an idea that you can then sort of extrapolate Absolutely. from there. Absolutely. And it's it's wonderful for, for guys that are, you know, and, and, and people that are into modular stuff as well, because, yeah. you know, transmitting that MIDI sound, sending it through into CV, into a modular rack, you know, creating those wonderful kind of textures that are uh, just organic and alive. This can be really great for just sequencing that stuff. And don't forget, we've got four 
independent sequences as well. So we're just using one at the moment, but they can all be doing uh, different pattern behaviors. So, you yeah. know, sequencer two could be going, you know, backwards. It could have a uh, ping pong effect on uh, sequencer number three, um, but also it's per pattern as well. So we showed earlier about chaining patterns together. So this could be out doing a random kind of probability and mutation. This one could be straight. This, the other one could have just mutation applied to it. So you've got alive organic sequences and patterns chained together. So and I think that, I mean, uh, what I really like on that pattern, we just get yeah. about the pattern, yeah. that looks rather familiar because that's essentially circuit, isn't it? It's, it's the yeah. same way that circuit works, albeit with an extra couple of lines. Yeah, that's it, yeah, yeah. yeah. So so people that, that do use circuit will be familiar with the fact of chaining patterns together. And it's how, you know, I suppose, way back when we used to make song structures and arrangements with hardware, it's kind of, you know, chaining that. And yeah. the addition of um, adding scenes as well. So being able to pick a selection of patterns chained together in one scene and then linking that to another scene it's different. You can imagine the way you can just completely build out your, your song yeah. and structure as well. Um, so that's using the sequencer um, to sequence hardware. But of course, there's a ton of stuff you can do with custom modes. Now, those that have seen the, the launch of the uh, Launchpad Mini Mark III and the uh, Launchpad X will be familiar with custom modes, which I think is a wonderful addition right across the range. So essentially what you've got is the ability to create your own launch pad. Um, and the way that you play and interact with your launch pad, be, albeit whether you know with software or hardware, you yeah. can create custom skins or mappings for, for your launch pad. Well, this is it. I mean, I used to do it in the old days with Tractor, where yeah. I'd literally build my own um, mapping up yeah. for, for launch pad with all the settings on. Yeah. But of course, that was just it was taking the exact same information that that mm -hmm. was put it out and routing it to something. Yeah, yeah. With this, it totally goes that step further because it puts yeah. the control back into the launch pad. It does, yeah. And it, and it allows you to open a, a, a wide range of software. So you mentioned some, you know, DJ software yeah. or something like that. You could cr essentially create something for, you know, DJ software or another DAW or a plugin in a DAW or hardware itself so and, and again that was reliant on me being able to change the um cc messages yep. to what it was getting put out of the launch pad yeah whereas on with this it's the other way around yeah it could completely and, and the thing is as well we've made it super simple and super easy to do it by giving you a visual representation of how you do it in uh novation components so yeah. novation components is essentially our online tool for managing all of your products. So not only Launchpad, but yes, with Launchpad Pro Mark III, you basically get uh, a view that gives you your Launchpad and says, right, what do you want to control and how do you want to control it? So we've got Novation Peak here. Now what we can do is, um, again, you know, my theory is not fantastic. I like to play this in scale and I want it to sound great. So I can drag out a scaled keyboard and I can say, right, I don't just want one octave, I want, you know, two octaves, say three octaves of a keyboard in the scale of the choice that I want to play in. Yeah. Right. And these things are called widgets. And we have tons of different stuff you can add, you know, horizontal, unipolar, uh, vertical, uh, unipolar faders, all this kind of stuff as well. So I'm going to say, right, okay, scale keyboard, I'm going to go into settings and just select the widget that I want to change. And within the settings, I can change this now. So I can say, right, the root note of D, I want it in a minor scale. Going to send it on MIDI channel one, of course, into peak. And uh, the bottom one here is going to be, say, octave number two. And we'll leave the next widget as octave number three. And we'll just have like a fourth octave there as well. Right. So, so really, you can scale this any which way, e yeah. even if you want it to go completely the other way around. Yep. It's un absolutely under your control. Completely. Select your scale. There's all your scale types that you can select. Really, really fun, easy, intuitive. But can also change the color. So those are familiar with the layout that we keep putting purple pads as a root note. Well, yeah. you can change that and you don't have to have the root note as that color, which is cool. You can have it um, a completely different color, which is really, really good. Yeah, as, as, especially if you have um, your, you've employed branding experts for your live performance <laughs> yeah, show exactly, and they're telling yeah, yeah. you that you can only yeah. use um, green and red. Yeah, exactly. You know? yeah, 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 of course. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like nothing's off limits, <laughs> yeah. which is great. Um, and then just for a bit of fun, what we're going to do is just, just maybe show off um, 
some of the the controls that we can add for peaks. For example, yeah. you know, perhaps we want to control like the the main filter frequency cutoff on on peak. So we're going to add like a horizontal fader, and I'm going to put it up the top there, so it's away from you know me playing, and you know I'm not going to yeah, knock norm it. Or normally a like good that. idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, you know, but that's the way you can customize you know the the, the mappings to your choosing. So we go to settings for the horizontal unipolar fader, and we're just going to say. CC number. Now we know that the CC for uh, the cutoff filter on peak is CC29. Again, always look in the back of your manual. You'll find the CC uh, numbers in the back of your synth manual. So we know that's number 29. Right. So that's my map. I'm happy with that. I want to send it to the Launchpad yeah. Pro Mark III. So we would save that and we'd give it a name, but then we send it to Launchpad Pro Mark III. And because on the Launchpad Pro, we've got eight different custom modes. So you can have up to eight different mappings for all of your hardware stored on the hardware itself. And that literally just comes back on yep. as soon as you power up the unit. It's there. literally going to be stored yeah. onto, flashed onto the unit, and it's going to stay on there as well. Now, you're not limited to eight. Uh, yes, on the hardware, but you can create tons of mappings, and you can save them and store them on Novation yeah. components, on the cloud, or natively on your on your computer's drive. So we're going to send that to uh, custom mode number two. There we go. And we hit custom mode here. And you can see along the bottom here, we can access the eight different custom modes. And we can see there's our, our custom map. So I'm just going to find a, a patch on um, peak. And we'll find something that's kind of classically poly sounding. It's a fat poly sound. <laughs> So there it is, it's in, it's in the scale of our choosing, which we've, we've chose, and at the top here we can see with the fader movement that we put in, we have full control over the, the cutoff of the filter on peak. So great way of creating mappings for your hardware. Now, when you've sort of done that, that's in the way that we've seen before with Launchpad, where basically the it's split into those yeah. um, eight divisions. Yeah. Uh, but obviously, a lot of the times, it's that's not um, massively smooth. And when you're doing something, rubbing your hand yeah. sort of across the eight of yeah. them. Um, I think with this, if I'm not right, that there's a way we can kind of smooth some of that out, isn't it? Yeah. So I mean, there's there's obviously you know it's a value between zero and 127 is the value that yeah. we're looking at, and that's spread across that pad. So, yeah, essentially, as we sweep up and down, we get a nice controlled movement. But yeah. with Launchpad Pro, we can actually access all of the setup for the launch pad itself. So, you know, we can adjust um, various different settings, like the LED brightness, stuff like that. We can adjust the velocity, which we'll speak about it in a did, moment. It did occur to me earlier. It was yeah. like, how do you know what's on? It's like, yeah. oh, okay, yeah. No, <laughs> it, it, it's telling us. That. It's telling us velocity, yeah. um, LED, but also aftertouch as well. Don't forget, we've got polyphonic aftertouch, which we have with the previous Launchpad Pro yeah. as well. So something like Peak that supports and receives polyphonic aftertouch, really expressive way of playing. Yeah. Um, so we can turn that on and, and, and off as well, but also uh, MIDI settings and fader settings. So at the moment, we can turn that fader movement on and off. So we go back to our setting now. <laughs> And we have like a slower sort of, you know, we're talking about velocity curves earlier. Yeah. So now we can um, tap lightly and we get like a real slow release. Or if we hit harder, get really fast, closing that filter really fast. But we can turn uh, and, that and on I think and off. That, and it is just sort of fat when you when you say fast on that that really is mm -hmm. that's a good shot there on yeah, it is yeah, it, yeah. It, it's it's as much literally it's, it's doing the that. same as you'd kind of be able yeah. to do it with this literally doing that and you've got that all at control with your fingertips and obviously we're just we're just showing the you know filter frequency cutoff but we can control you know on peak the reverbs everything all from the launch pad surface itself so imagine you're on stage you've got all these synths around you and you can literally have this as a central hub to that performance. Oh yeah, like, yeah, totally. Like you said, the the, the reverb mm -hmm. and a and a filter mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of the time in a live performance is it's um, probably the two that you're gonna yeah. batter the most. Yeah, absolutely. So having yeah. them there. Um and with this, can, can you use that as part of the sequence? Can you record these movements or is this purely for performance? Um so I mean yeah, we're using it externally at the moment, but um I've had a lot of fun obviously recording automation into like 
say Ableton Live using these parameter movements as well. So yes. let's say you've got your favorite plugin, you know, the CC value of the filter there, you know, recording that in will, you know, store that as automation. Essentially it's sending Yeah, because uh, it, it's, it's just yeah. MIDI messages that are yeah. coming out. And if you use Ableton to capture yeah. it in the yeah. in the normal way, yeah. then you will get that lovely smooth movement. Yeah. Uh, on the filter. And you go record that automation straight in. Yeah, absolutely. So it can be used in that way as well, building mappings for your software or favorite plugins and stuff as well. I mean, I, I kind of like it because sometimes you don't think, especially rhythmically and stuff, if you are literally just sat on a knob mm -hmm. trying to, to program in a pattern or something, mm -hmm. having something yeah. like that where actually you can change yeah. it via velocities and stuff might just get a different idea out. Yeah. And sometimes that spark of inspiration is really what yeah. you and need. Like you say, certainly in the ideas process of the, the writing yeah. music, the composition process, we just want a quick, yeah, what does that sound like? It sounds great. Yeah, I'll use that. You know, you can adjust it on the launch pad itself. So yeah, custom modes, it's tons of fun, really customizable, really powerful. Yeah, no, I think it's a fantastic upgrade. I yeah. mean, we've got, uh, we're not short of Launchpad Pros <laughs> here in the shop as we've got one of the uh, Launchpad um, XXLs. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. set up. Lots set of up. Fun. Yeah, lots um, of fun. I kind of want to go and replace them all with these now. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, but um, yeah, I think it's, it's a fantastic upgrade. There's loads of stuff there that's actually usable and playable in both the for live and the studio. Yeah, completely, completely. And I think, it, like we said, it bridges the gap between Launchpad Performer and Launchpad Producer and really works with those ideas process to help you just get ideas down wherever it is, yeah. Cool. Well, Mark, thanks a lot for coming Welcome. and showing us today. Welcome. Thanks um, for having us. Yeah, it's been wonderful. So um, if you've got any questions, then of course, bung them in the comments and we'll try and get back to you. If not, don't forget to um, subscribe and we'll see you again for a video soon. Cheers.